Happy Monday, Dolphins fans. We got a loaded show here at Dolphins Today by Chat Sports. I am Nick Roloff. We will start off with Jeff Wilson. Should the Dolphins deal away the veteran running back? Then we'll transition to Tyreek Hill. Does he have contract issues with Miami after Justin Jefferson got that massive bag today? And then we'll close out with the second-year corner, Cam Smith out of South Carolina. Is he going to break out in year two? But it is a new month which means we have a new sub battle. This one going against the Chiefs and Steelers. We were able to take down the New England Patriots in May, but now we're getting challenged by two different channels here at Chat Sports. The AFC rivals in the Kansas City Chiefs and the Steelers were all pretty similar in sub count as well in the mid 50,000s. So can we be the first to get the 60,000? Help me out, Dolphins fans. All right, before we get into the rumors, I do want to remind everyone of our segment, which is the Dolphins Rumors Roundup and what the fins mean. If I give something zero fins, that means it's fake news, not going to happen. One fin, small shred of truth. Two, people are talking. Three fins, pretty likely. And then four fins, it's happening, baby. It's basically a lock. So with that being said, let's get into the first part of today's show, and it's trading Jeff Wilson, what are the chances the Dolphins do this before the season begins in September? I'm giving it three fins, folks, which means it's pretty likely. Why do I say that? Well, it's just there's so many running backs in this room, and after the Dolphins traded a first round or excuse me, a fourth round pick in the future to draft Jalen Wright in the fourth round, it's pretty clear that they have a plan for the Tennessee running back to pair him up with Raheem Mostert and Devon Achan, which puts Jeff Wilson Jr. on the outs on this room as a 28-year-old veteran. And then you also take into consideration that the Dolphins employ a fullback, Alec Ingold. Not many teams use a fullback. That's another roster spot that could limit Jeff Wilson and he was not that effective for Miami a year ago battled injuries only played in 10 games and you really saw HN who was drafted on day two from Texas A&M and Raheem Mostert take the control of this backfield so then if you add another running back in here what makes us think this upcoming season for Jeff Wilson would be any different and if you do deal him away this offseason, it frees you up $1.4 million in cap space. It's not a lot. It's not a ton. It's not going to make a major difference. But you do at least get a little bit of savings because there are contracts out there. If you deal a person away, you'd have to pay some of their salary and you'd actually be losing a little bit of money. Not the case with Jeff Wilson. So to me... I think you got to trade Jeff Wilson. If there's a team out there that's willing to take on his contract, he's 28 years old, you have to take advantage. It might not be for a lot, but with the addition of Jalen Wright, you have Devon Achan year two, Raheem Mostert at age 32 coming off a season where he had 18 touchdowns. There is just not enough room for Jeff Wilson. I don't think he gives you enough value on special teams either to justify keeping him. I'd rather keep Ahmed and Brooks for that role. So Jeff Wilson, trade him away if there's an offer on the table. What a trade could look like for Jeff Wilson, though. You're not going to get much. It's not like this is a premier running back that's going to net you a third or fourth round pick. It's just simply not going to happen. And many teams probably assume Miami is going to cut Jeff Wilson, which could be an outcome that we see in this offseason. But if you have some team calling you for Jeff Wilson, they're offering you a seventh, I think you take it. I think the Raiders could be a team that does that. Their two lead backs are Zeus White and Alexander Madison after letting Josh Jacobs go to Green Bay in the offseason. There's also some rumors and reports that they like this UDFA running back out of North Dakota, Lao Bay, I believe his name is. But I think Jeff Wilson could be a good third back for that room. So if they come calling with a seventh round pick, I know it's not much, but it's better than cutting them, right? And you save the 1.4 mil. So you make the call for me. Should the Dolphins trade Jeff Wilson? If you believe they should trade him if there's an offer type T, if you want to keep him as that fourth back, it's your right to do so. Type those Ks. Let's get into Tyreek Hill now. Does he have contract issues with the Dolphins? One fin. Not a lot to talk about here, but I think it is a discussion worth having at least 
as we look to project what could happen because Justin Jefferson did get the bag. And this all started with Christopher Knox from Bleacher Report kind of put out a nugget. And this actually article was inspired by Jalen Waddell get his, and getting his extension last Thursday. Knox said that Hill is entering the final year of his contract in 2026 that will carry a base salary of $43.9 million, but will include only $11.3 million of dead money. Miami probably won't let Hill play out the final season on that deal. So essentially, Hill is under contract for two more seasons, while his 2024 and 25 cap pits of 31.3 and 34.2 million, respectively, are still impressive. They could be substantially eclipsed by deals by Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. And, like I just mentioned, Justin Jefferson did get a massive contract extension. This morning, the Minnesota Vikings gave him a four-year, $140 million extension, which comes out to $35 million in annual average salary, which is the highest non- or quarterback in the entire NFL, just passing Nick Bosa of the San Francisco 49ers. So Jefferson gets the bag, and there might be a chance where Tyree Kill wants to at least get equal to that or get a little bit more. And I will say this when it comes to Tyree Kill's contract. I don't believe he will make a mess or ask for too much more this offseason. He obviously might have a conversation with the Dolphins front office and Chris Greer about like, yeah, could I get a little bit more, more money right now? Like he'll obviously ask that, but it's not like there will be a holdout or him going on social media declaring that he needs to pay paid more money. Like he's having solid money given to him over the next two seasons at over $30 million a year, respectively. So to me, if Tyree Kill does want a new extension and want more money from the Dolphins, this will all happen next offseason. I also think Hill loves Miami. He's a team player, good teammate. He knows that Tua is up for a contract extension. He knows that Javon Holland is up for an extension. And I think he'll let those two guys get their money this offseason so he can get it next offseason and he won't make a deal. But his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, was asked today about what Tyree Kill could possibly want after the Jefferson news came to light. And Drew said that the Dolphins know how we feel. So does this mean Hill has actually already stated to Chris Greer in this front office that he wants to get paid more money? There is a chance, but there is one thing that is certain. You cannot break up this duo because they are absolutely phenomenal together and have been the best wide receiver duo in the entire NFL. Over the last two years, when they've been teammates, they've been nothing short of fantastic. 33 for Hill, 31 for Waddle in terms of game plays, and Hill's had 3,500 yards. That is not a typo, folks. I know you guys know how good Tyree Kill actually is, but to have 3,500 yards through two seasons is absolutely absurd. Pair that up with 22 touchdowns. He's been the first or second best wide receiver in football. Choose your poison between him and Justin Jefferson. But obviously, Waddle has also been very solid as well, putting up 16 yards a catch and 76 yards a game. The, the bottom line here is there is absolutely no way that you can jeopardize and risk these two not being teammates with Tua Tagovailoa under center. You need to do anything possible to keep these two together and keep this best duo in the NFL at wide receiver. Now, does that mean maybe moving some money around? Tyree Kill gets more money this year and next year, and you limit his cap hit in that 26 final season. I don't know, but whatever Tyree Kill wants, as long as it's not crazy demand, you just have to pay it because he's the best wide receiver in football and one of the biggest game changers in all of the NFL as well with how fast he is and how much defenses have to game plan around him taking the top off of the defense. All right, one more segment to get to with Cam Smith, but make sure you are hooked up with this Dolphins t-shirt combo on sale right now for $15 off at chatsports.com slash dolphins combo. I'm going to be kind enough to put that link in the description and comments of today's video. So take advantage, grab some sweet dolphins gear, orange, aqua, what else can you ask for? $15 off chatsports.com slash dolphins combo. All right, final segment on today's show. Cam Smith, the second year corner out of South Carolina. Is he going to break out in year two? I'm giving it three fins as well because I think it's pretty likely. And he's just going to have to when you really think about how this team 
is put together in the cornerback room. He obviously did not play a lot in 2023 as a rookie. Under Vic Vangio as defensive coordinator, Smith never saw the field. He only played 20 defensive snaps all year long, which obviously is something that you wouldn't have expected when you were a second-round pick. That's a high-valued selection that you'd imagine get a lot of playing time. Well, Cam Smith actually had something to say on this upcoming year for Miami. Smith said, I didn't have the season I wanted. I didn't really get the opportunities that I wanted. But I mean, that's that. In the end, I ain't got nothing given to you in this league. Stuff happens, and I'm here, so I feel like I'm free. So he feels like he has a better chance to break out in year two under Anthony Weaver. And I do want to tell you this, Dolphins fans. I understand it was frustrating not seeing Cam Smith on the football field last year under Vic Fangio. But there is a kind of silver lining in all this, right? He was able to sit behind two of the best boundary corners in NFL, especially over the past five or six seasons, in Xavier Howard and Jalen Ramsey. Getting to soak up everything, watching them play, how they attack matchups, the film leading up to each Sunday, that will all set in for Cam Smith, and I believe that will only help him in the future. Yes, would have loved to see him get some experience on the field, but he did gain a lot in knowledge learning under Jalen Ramsey and Xavier Howard. And I'll say this too, Cam Smith will absolutely be called upon by Anthony Weaver in this Dolphins defense in 2024. You lost a lot of depth, Eli Apple, whatever you want to say about him, he is no longer here. But when you look at this room, you have a good duo once again at corner. Jalen Ramsey and Kendall Fuller on the outside. That's very solid. Cater Kohu is a solid nickel who I believe is going to bounce back after a little bit of a down 2023. But the main point I want to make here is the depth on this Dolphins cornerback room is a little shaky. Nick Needham is your CB4. He'll likely play a little bit of nickel, but he's also working in a lot with the safeties to try to take over as that third safety potentially if they don't like Elijah Campbell. And then that's where Cam Smith comes in at CB4, CB5. But when you think about outside boundary corners, Cam Smith might be that third guy that Weaver will have to call upon. So Smith will have to play, and hopefully he was able to learn a lot last year and put it to good use in 2024. Are you excited for the second year of Cam Smith? I am. I think he, that was a good pick last year. I know, didn't get to play, but I believe it will pay off and through it or be great for Miami this upcoming season. So if you're excited like me, type those two fours. Yep, I'm going to keep on saying it. I expect a big year for Cam Smith. He's going to be called upon, man. I don't know how many times I have to hammer this home to all of you at home, but he is going to be needed to play. He has good length, and if Kendall Fuller or Jalen Ramsey end up getting banged up, I do have the confidence in putting Cam Smith on the outside. I also believe that in some Anthony Weaver-led schemes by the Dolphins that he is going to play a pivotal role. Weaver likes to do a lot of versatile things. He likes to go three Five five or so, or three four five. So I do believe he's going to be called upon by Anthony Weaver, and I do think Cam Smith is going to have a big second year. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we are going to have you covered on everything surrounding the Miami Dolphins. We go live on Tuesdays. Don't forget that Tuesday at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Join us for that live show. We'll have coverage of mandatory mini camp spanning from June 4th to June 6th as well. I'm Nick Roloff. I'll see you in the next video. Go Fence.